Today, I want to show you how to turn a boring two-dimensional photo into a magical 3D printed lithophane. What? You're not impressed? Okay. How about now? Originally, lithophanes were hand carved into porcelain, but now we can make them with a 3D printer. See, it's just a thin piece of plastic. When you place a light behind it, you can see your image. This lithophane was printed in white PLA, but it will look different when you use a cooler or warmer light bulb. You can also place them on your windowsill and let the sun do its job. And if you add a little color, you get a neat retro look. We'll glue that in later. The brand of filament you use will also play a role in how your lithophane turns out. I used Jesse Quarter White on that first one and Ziltex Ceramic White on the second. It's a really bright white PLA. Both prints are using the exact same settings. Now, if you're looking for some speed tips, you can remove the background with your favorite photo editing software. I did this in Canva and the lithophane printed 25% faster. So we're printing it smaller. I did a lot of tiny little test lithos while doing my research and they only took about two hours each. Not all filament is good for making lithophanes. Some makers ask if a more translucent plastic will give them better results. Um, no. You really need an opaque filament to capture the light and create a lithophane's magic. You can also err on picking out too dense a filament. This wood fill PLA was a complete disaster. Now let's talk about lithophane programs. In order to make a lithophane, you're gonna have to run your photograph through a program that you can find for free on the internet. I've tried out several. We've got 3DP Rocks, Lithophane Maker, It's Litho, and Cura, though I don't really recommend it. I've also heard of one called Luban, but it costs $14 a month and I'm not ready to pay money just to make a lithophane. Let me show you around my favorite program for making lithophanes. It's called It's Litho, and it's a nice modern program with a good clean layout, and you really don't even need a tutorial to figure it out. First, you're gonna upload an image. Uh, JPEGs or PNGs work for this. And then you're gonna go over to edit, and if you need to make any tweaks to your photograph, you can adjust the brightness and the contrast and all kinds of things right here in the software. This particular photo, I like to add a little contrast. Um, between the kids' hair and their faces. to It just looks better. And there's some other things you can do here like rotate and crop it. Cropping can come in handy if you're trying to run a test and you don't want to waste 10, 12 hours on a full-size photo. You can just take a sliver of your photograph and run it through. So once you're done messing around with your photo, go over to Model. And here's where you can make the adjustments uh, to create that lithophane. There's a lot of different shapes built right in. There's the plane. Uh, there's a pumpkin. I don't know why you want to turn into a pumpkin. Circle would be pretty good if you're trying to make a Christmas ornament. The basic plane is good if you're going to put this into a frame later or maybe into a box that you're going to make. But right now we're going to go for an arc. I like the arcs because not only can you set them on a windowsill all by themselves, they add a little more stability when they're on the printer. Once you've picked out your shape, you can adjust the size. So there's a slider for the height. Um, if you're doing a plane, you can also adjust the width yourself. This one's automatic. And then most importantly, you can adjust the thickness and thinness of the lithophane. And you have to remember the thicker parts block light, the thinner parts let light through. So I like to go for 2.8. Um, I know it's not quite as contrasty as a real photograph, but I think this gives me the best qu print quality. Um, I've tried some at 3.2 and I had problems with bridging on the kids' eyebrows and the last thing you want are eyebrows drooping down into their little faces. Now you can adjust your frame options. You can do a frame or a border. And I like to take the frame off entirely because that speeds the print up just a little bit. And then you can go down here to quality 
and this adjusts the millimeter per pixels and the larger the number, the softer the image. And this is just a personal preference. You can try it out on this particular kid's shirt. Uh, when it was too fine a resolution, it was just a really crazy pointy print. So I calmed it down to a uh, 0.2 on this one. Next, you're going to go down to your attributes. And this is pretty cool because if you wanted to turn this into a lamp, it will automatically hold a, uh, add a little holder for you. You can also choose to make it a night light and it will add a little clip that slides right into a night light that plugs into your wall. But since I'm just gonna put this on the windowsill, I'm gonna go for a closed bottom and that just adds a nice flat area back there to help, help it stand up. Now the model options and whatnot, this is not really anything you need to mess with. Um, most of this you handled over in the editing phase. So the only thing left to do is hit download. And you have a couple of choices here. If you added something, you want to hit the lithophane plus the attribute. And that will give you an STL file with uh, the, the lampshade holder or whatever. And then the color lithophane will give you the color printout that you print on your two-dimensional paper printer. After you've downloaded your lithophane, I would go ahead and grab that color lithophane, even if you don't think you'll need it. It's just easier to do it now than try to remember what size you made your lithophane and come back and grab it later. Because this needs to line up precisely. This color lithophane print is not the best, but there's a method to the madness. This washed out image is just the right amount of color that you need for the light to shine through the plastic and give you that neat retro look. So once you've got everything downloaded, you can go over to Cura or your favorite slicer if you're not using Cura. Just pull up the, um, well, not the JPEG, that's kind of silly. Okay, pull up the STL file. It's litho will drop the file right on the Y axis for you, which is great. If you have a printer like a CR10 or an Ender that moves the bed back and forth and this will minimize some shake. Now let me show you how I set up my print for lithophanes. It's a little bit different than regular prints. You wanna make this as solid as possible. So, and also fine quality. So I do a 0.12 layer height 99 walls, and I know you don't need 99 walls, it's not that thick, but this is just to make sure that it's totally solid. I also don't use any infill, because it's not necessary. Now I'm gonna go ahead and hit the slice button just to see what we're uh, looking at, and we've got 12 hours and 11 minutes so far. Now we should probably talk about speed. I have this set up at 40 millimeters a second which sounds kind of fast for a lithophane, but you have to realize we're not using any infill. It is just walls. And our wall speed is 20 millimeters a second. So this is really quite slow. Now the rest of the settings, I have a two on my retraction because of my micro Swiss, and you'll want to use a brim or even a raft to make sure that this thing is very steady. Once you got everything set up the way you like, Go ahead and send it to your printer and let's see what it looks like.